guys it's leah welcome back or welcome if you are new and welcome to my february wrap up from worst to best except it was probably my best reading month that i have ever had i am dying to talk to you guys about these books i had such an incredible reading month in terms of quality and quantity and today although i do normally rely on natural lighting for my videos i decided that i would just film one tonight a very cozy sort of calm style and by candlelight so although you can't see the candles behind me it is giving me an incredible sense of comfort and coziness I hope that you're cozy. Definitely urge you guys to also get yourselves a cup of tea or your favourite snack. I have a chamomile tea and yeah let's get straight into all of the books. In February I ended up reading 11 books. I did also have two DNFs of the month, my first two DNFs of the year and in terms of how much I read from my physical TBR, 10 of the books I already owned and one I read on my Kindle and I don't own it. So as well as it being an incredible month quality wise, I also read 10 books of my physical TBR so I am extremely happy about that. Before getting into the actual books that I did finish, let's briefly talk about the books that I DNF. I actually DNF'd both of these books in two different vlogs I uploaded in February, so all of my thoughts in depth as to why I DNF'd them will be in those. But the books I DNF'd were Bryn and Sebastian Hate Each Other by Bethany Tanner and Butter by Izaki Yuzuki. I don't really want to go into it for this video, I want this video to be incredibly positive because I had such a positive reading month, but if you want to see my thoughts and why I did DNF these, I will link the videos down below. But yeah, those were my two DNFs of the month and going into all of the books that I actually read. Obviously from worst to best. So the worst book that I read in February, I actually rated three stars. So not even a bad, bad book was The Risk by St. Abbey. This is the first book in the Mindful series. This is the one that I read on my Kindle and I do not own it. And I did enjoy it. This was always a series that I knew once I got hold of my Kindle, because they are all on Kindle Unlimited, I knew that I would probably binge read the entire series. I haven't. I have only read the first one. I don't know if I am going to carry on the series, just based off my experience with this. I did find it really enjoyable. It was fun. We're essentially following a female serial killer and she is dating this guy from the FBI. He is an FBI profiler. I think literally criminal minds. Like the entire time I was reading this book, I was kind of thinking, or Spencer Reed, I'm not gonna lie. Was that probably one of the biggest parts of my enjoyment? Yeah it's Spencer Reed. But the actual book and the writing I didn't think was all that great and all that groundbreaking and to be honest I wasn't really expecting it to be. I was expecting just a fun time and that is definitely what I got. I would be intrigued to carry on with the series. If you've read it please let me know if it gets better. If it's worth definitely carrying on. I know they're only like 100 pages each so they're not going to take me that long to get through. I rated that one three stars. It was fun. And then getting on to the actual physical books that I read in February. The next worst book that I read actually isn't worse or bad at all. Everything else other than the risk was four stars and above. I had a really 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 good reading month. I'm so happy with how it went. And so a book I rated four stars and absolutely loved was Bad Diaspora Poems by Mumtaza Miri. This is obviously a collection of poetry. It had been quite a while actually since I decided to pick up a poetry collection and I binge read this one in an entire night. It's kind of my favourite way to consume poetry and I absolutely loved it. This one has been nominated for so many awards and I can 100% understand why the writing was absolutely astounding. This entire collection is about race and immigration and family and love and loss and grief and it was so moving. I annotated and underlined so many poems as my favourite ones and I would definitely recommend this if you are looking for a really good poetry collection to start. It was beautiful, not a bad poem in sight, even though that is what the title suggests, would 100% recommend four stars. The next worst book I read, I feel really stupid saying that in this video because I absolutely adored all of these, would be The Catch by Amy Lee. This is the third book and I think actually the final book in Amy Lee's Influencer series, where the first one was Set on You, then X's and O's and now the catch. I really enjoyed this. I absolutely adored both of the other books. I think the way that Amy Lee writes romance books are so fun. So tension filled without feeling too slow. This one we are basically following Melanie. She is a fashion influencer and she essentially gets invited onto this fashion trip I think to Canada and like just to promote it. There is a mix up in the booking and she kind of has to delay it by a couple of days so she decides to stay in this Airbnb. She books herself into this Airbnb but when she gets there it says it's closed. It's kind of under renovation. She's obviously really confused and the owner of the Airbnb, Evan, comes out and basically is just a massive pain in the ass. He's a big grump. This is definitely the grumpy ex-sunshine trope. It is also fake fiancés. The way that Amy Lee writes romances really works for me. Always so tension-filled and this was no different. Four stars, absolutely adored it. Shock, another book I rated four stars was Bright Young Women by Jessica Knoll. This is a book that I had on my TBR ever since it was first published and I heard a plethora of really good things about this book and I always 
really wanted to read it. What is so great about this is that it is so much about the women and the survivors and the victims and not necessarily about the serial killer, which I find a lot of true crime in general, but a lot of true crime fiction books also just tend to always focus on that. But this one wasn't and it was incredible because of it. And I love the way that Jessica Knoll wrote and her descriptions and even in terms of pacing, obviously this happened in real life. Like this is somebody's reality, but I feel like the way she dealt with such subject matters and the entire discussion surrounding it, she did it so delicately and so perfectly. Going into this, I didn't even know what case it was actually based off of. And I didn't really want to know, but I did find out when I was watching someone's vlog. And although I would say I didn't really like care to know, I would say it is so good that it took me so long to kind of work out and find out who it is about. And I think that is a real credit to this book and what it tried to achieve and what it did achieve. It was just so moving, really evoked such female fucking rage within me, but I feel like that was the point. It was just such an incredible read. Would 100% highly recommend it. Definitely obviously check trigger warning. But this book was incredible. 100% agree with all of the hype that it got last year and I loved it. Also four stars. Another four stars was Earthlings by Siaka Murata. I am so happy that I finally, I would say I finally got to this, but I have picked this up about three times now. I just never actually finished it. So I'm so happy that I now have finished it. It was a weird, gross, anger provoking a story that was equally as wonderful in places and really discussed and spoke about family and adolescence and being a young girl and being taken advantage of because of it. It was such a fascinating character study and I love the way Siaka Murata writes so much. This is probably my favourite that I have read from her yet. I say that, I'm pretty sure the only ones that I have read are this one and Convenience Store Woman. I would definitely say I did prefer this one. I love how weird it was. But still being so literary and full of really interesting and imperative discussions, I thought it was incredible. This is one again I would say definitely check trigger warnings for. A lot of the scenes in this I was not expecting and it really, like I did listen to the audiobook for this. And I really at times had to put it down and kind of gather my thoughts because I was so enraged by what was happening. Honestly, that's a credit to Siaka Murata's writing. This was astounding. I would definitely recommend it. Again, check trigger warnings, but for those that can and want to read it, would definitely recommend. It was brilliant. Oh, then we have my first ever Dostoevsky and I wanted to read a book from him for years, but everything obviously other than the short stories is over like 700, 800 pages and I just don't have, not the time, the willpower to dedicate myself to it currently. So the first one I went for was White Knights. Again, I absolutely adored this. This was another four star. I love so much how it was a depiction of unrequited love. I love the way that it was so heart-wrenching and raw and difficult to read, but not in the sense of accessibility. I actually would say that I was quite wary going into one of his works and not really understanding it, but this one I do find was very accessible, especially for a classic and a Russian classic. So when I say difficult, I mean more in the subject matter. I can imagine it's really hard to portray unrequited love in the way that he did in such a short story. All whilst making it so impactful and so moving for the reader, I absolutely adored it. And there were so many quotes in this that I underlined and I'm like, oh my God, I need to remember these forever. And I wasn't really expecting that from him. So it was a real pleasant surprise. And yeah, I'm so excited to read some more from him. Please let me know if you have read any. If I should go for Crime and Punishment or The Brothers Karamazov, please let me know. I definitely want to read more and film my experience reading them. White Knights, I would definitely recommend. Even if you are not a big classics reader, I would definitely say that this is quite accessible and give it a try. You might fall in love with it like I did. Those were all of my four star reads. So we're going to go on to my 4.5 and my five stars. If you're not new here, you will know that I very rarely rate books five stars. I think out of like the 110 or so books that I read last year, only nine of them were five stars, which isn't great. But in February, I had three five stars. This is literally unheard of for me. Like I'm so happy about it. I will say though that my favourite book of February unfortunately I'm not going to talk about in this video because I've been talking about this like secret reading vlog that I've been filming for about two months in so many videos. But at the time that you're watching this the video is actually going to come out in a week or actually less than a week so you'll get all of my thoughts for my favourite book of February in that one I promise. But I had two 4.5 stars. Honestly dare I say that in about a week I will no doubt up them to a five star but for the sake of the video right now they are 4.5 and the first one is Daisy Hates the Great Undoing by Jessa Hastings. This is my favourite book in the entire Magnolia Park series. I know I questioned whether I was a Magnolia Park girly or a Daisy Hates girly. No, without a doubt I'm a Daisy Hates girly. I adored this so much. I love following these characters, specifically Daisy, Christian and Julian 
obviously. And I really don't know what it is about this series. For me, these characters don't feel fictional. They are people in my brain. Like, they actually exist. And I think that is partly why I love the series so much. This one was just something else. And I don't really know how to pinpoint that. I just absolutely fell in love with it. And I absolutely adored it. It was another one that I filmed my entire experience reading in a reading vlog. I'm just utterly obsessed with them. Like, if Magnolia Parks or Daisy Hates, if they have no fans, I'm dead. 4.5 stars. One of my favourite books that I read this month. Talking about one of the favourite books that I read this month, we also have The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Broadbent. You may know, I'm heavily in my fantasy era right now. I cannot stop reading fantasy and I'm having the time of my life. Honestly, I've been waiting my entire life for this. Don't get me wrong, I have read quite a bit of fantasy before and I used to, especially when I was a little bit younger, but for so long I hadn't picked one up and it was just a genre that I never ever went for. Until very recently, I would definitely say since the start of the year and there are books that explain why I'm obsessed with the genre now, you'll see soon. But this one is one that was on my radar for, I want to say over a year based on like TikTok. I saw so many people talking about it and I was like, oh my god, this sounds perfect. Like Hunger Games and the Vampires what's not to like. I just never got around to it because I was never in a fantasy mood and then this one had been sitting on my shelf for months and I just decided finally to go for it. I've really been craving being obsessed with a fantasy series. And with this one I am, spoiler alert, we are a couple of days into March at the time that I'm filming this and I have already read the novella Six Scorched Roses. Honestly, Carissa Broadbent might become one of my favourite authors. I've already had a 4.5 from her and again, spoiler alert, another five star, dare I say. I'm just in love with this series and with this book. The tension and the yearning in this book, the found family element the plot and the world building i didn't find too much at all i thought it was the perfect balance between that and character analysis and just getting straight to it the way that this book starts you are already completely in the action to the point you almost feel like you're already playing catch up and i absolutely adored that because it just allowed for so much intrigue i did not want to put this book down every single opportunity i had to pick it up i did and this series is my current new hyperfixation you will probably see a recurring theme of carissa broadbent's books in the next couple of wrap-ups would highly highly recommend 4.5 five stars but probably five stars. And then we have two more books to talk about today. These two were five stars and we're going to start with By Grand Central Station, I Sat Down and Wept by Elizabeth Smart. Another one that was on my radar for years and I always wanted to get to but for some reason never picked it up and then I found this in a charity shop and I pretty much instantly started it. This is one of the most heart-wrenching, beautiful, raw depictions of love I have ever, ever read. It was so real and so vivid and so visceral and I could picture every single scene and so poetic. This is entire book read like poetry like one big poem i essentially pretty much underlined every single quote every single word such a beautiful and stunning meditation on being human and having real just human emotions and love and regret and it was astounding i would definitely recommend this to anyone a hundred percent pick it up it was such a short read also i flew through it basically read it in one sitting and yeah i think it's one that so many more people should talk about so i would definitely recommend it i obviously rated it five stars and then the second book that i rated five stars the last book to talk about for this video was Deaf Valley by Melissa Broder. Before I even get into my thoughts this book I literally I posted this on my TikTok if you follow me over there you may have already seen but I innocently posted a picture of me on my b-reel reading this book but didn't quite realize the page that I was on before pressing send. And when I tell you that every single person in my friends list was messaging me like Leah what the f are you reading like what weird smut is this? I was mortified I'll put why on the screen. Yeah, traumatized. This is not smut. This is definitely not a romance book. This is in fact a literary fiction. A literary fiction that I absolutely fell in love with and has definitely become one of my favorites. This was without a doubt a five stars, arguably one of the easiest five stars I've ever given a book ever. I don't know how to explain what this book is about. It is a very weird and gross novel about womanhood and navigating womanhood and about grief and parental sort of grief and accepting illness, accepting your illness and accepting other people's illness and accepting death. It is such a difficult read. The one that is so rich in imagery and equally so hilarious. Like this entire book, I was either screaming at, crying at, or laughing at. I was head over heels for it and I read it so incredibly quickly. It's one that I would definitely recommend to people who like literary fiction, especially on like the weirder side. I need to read some more Melissa Broder. I cannot believe that I hadn't prior to this. I'd always heard such great things about Milk Fed and the Pisces and they were always on my list, but I just never kind of prioritized 
sanitize them. Now though, I need to get my hands on them because I need to read them as soon as possible. I just, I'm in love with her writing style and I feel like she is gonna become one of my favorite authors. This book is just the perfect mix of everything that I like in literary fiction and fiction and just the weirdness mixed with the wonderful. It was perfect, would highly, highly recommend. Probably gonna be in my top 10 books of 2024. <laughs> so those were all of the books that I read in February from worst to best, even though it kind of didn't really work this month because I pretty much loved every single thing that I read. If you have read any of the books that I also read in February, please let me know what you thought about them, whether you love them or you dislike them. I always say I am so nosy, so I would love to know. Or if they are even on your TBR, please let me know. If you also want to show you stayed until the very end of the video, but you don't really know what to comment, comment either like a snake emoji for Serpent in the Wings of Night or a cactus emoji for Death Valley. As always, if you did enjoy this video and you are not yet subscribed, it would mean the world if you did consider doing so. We have so much fun over here and I would love to have you here. And yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching and for spending some time with me and I will see you again very, very soon with another video.